Hi everyone, thanks for joining today's session, Verify Your SD-WAN Policy and Troubleshoot in Just Three Clicks. I'm Monique Lucy, Director of Product Marketing at Live Action, and I will be your host. So today I'm joined by David Azumo, Principal Technical Marketing Engineer here at Live Action. Um, you can go ahead and feel free to ask questions throughout the session using the Q&A panel on the right. And this session is also being recorded and you'll get an email with a link to the playback after the event. We've also shared some additional resources that you might find useful and you can find these by clicking the attachments tab. So with that, I will turn it over to David for the demonstration. In the last webinar, we had a brief overview of day zero network and application baselining and planning for an SD-WAN deployment. And also, we noticed the simplicity of onboarding a new Cisco SD-WAN site, leveraging the API integration between LiveNX and Cisco vManage. Well, now that our SD-WAN sites have been deployed, let's continue in our day one workflows. Today, let's look into the use case of verifying the Cisco SD-WAN application aware routing policy and troubleshooting a brownout scenario. First off though, let's review our engineering console and get our bearings on the network topology. Live Action LiveNX is very well known for our visual analytics for situational awareness. And really our goal is to help recreate the mental model of the network engineer. So you can think of this engineering council sort of like a dynamic Visio diagram or a dynamic whiteboard. So you can move these sites or these devices on the layout and to recreate that mental model or the way that you think about the network. Now I'm going to zoom in to some of these devices on the screen and I'm just using the scroll button on my mouse or you can use these little magnifying glasses in the upper left hand corner. So these big circles represent routers. I'll just zoom in just a little bit more. These big circles represent routers or switches, basically a network device. And the little circles inside represent interfaces. So here we see gigabit ethernet 02 and also 01. These are connected off to service providers in this particular instance. Now the top portion of these interfaces represent ingress bandwidth and the bottom portion egress bandwidth. So very quickly and easily, you're able to get your bearings and understand exactly how this topology is laid out for your network scenario. Now, over the top, we're overlaying application flows or converse conversations, leveraging IP fix, S flow, and NetFlow so that we can see these conversations. Now, you can also query LiveNX kind of like a Google search for NetFlow or IP fix to look for parameters of interest. So for example, if I want to look for my voice over IP application, I can simply type in a command and search for VoIP and I'll press enter now. We're querying the back end, and now we're gonna overlay on this topology all of our voice traffic. Now that gives you a good sense of how this critical application is traversing the network and being routed over various service providers like the MPLS circuit or the internet circuit here. Now we can also double click on a device. So in this case, we'll double click into the Chicago site, the Chicago router, the router that we just added into the system in our previous webinar. Now by double clicking on that router, we'll take you into the real time network view. This is re real time IP fix collection uh, by this device into LiveNX. Now we see all the conversations, the source and destination IP addresses, the port numbers, along with the application. So we see YouTube traffic, Hulu, along with various other types of applications like voice over IP, uh, Google traffic, and so forth. And then likewise, we get segmentation data as well. So for Cisco SD-WAN, we're getting the VPN ID. This corresponds to the service VPN or a VRF to have segmentation within the environment. Now, likewise, what a lot of our customers really appreciate as well is this historical playback capability. So I'll click on that button here in the upper right hand corner. And now you can go back in time. You can think of this historical playback kind of like a network DVR of sorts. So I'll go back to another day and then 
let's go ahead and just simply click play. So even though this happened a day ago or multiple days ago, it's as if you're sitting on the console live, seeing all these conversations go in and out of this particular router. And likewise, if you wanna use that same search that we did earlier, we, it's right there at your fingertips. Just go ahead and bring up that search for voice over IP, click enter, and now we're focusing our attention on this critical application. So notice we just saw how that traffic moved from one interface over to this other interface and now it's happening again. Now this is historically occurring in a previous day, but it gives you a good sense of how you can track your critical applications and the raw conversations going in and out of a router. The engineering console is great for a deep dive into the raw conversations, tracking applications hop by hop through the network. It helped us to understand the individual constructs of what we'll discuss next. So another key capability uh, to help network engineers to operationalize SD-WAN is with our operations dashboard with a web UI. So let's switch gears and let's take a look at our operations dashboard. When a network engineer first logs in, they're presented with this overview page where it outlines your sites, your devices, interfaces, as well as the alerts. As we talked about earlier in our previous webinar, you can also filter uh, to drill down on specific sites, regions, service providers, or even devices to converge around that topic of interest. But for today, let's focus our attention on the geotopology. To get to that, you can click on this menu button in the upper left-hand corner. We'll go down to topology and then select geotopology. Now that we've deployed several SD-WAN sites, we want to verify the application aware routing policy, as well as the per VPN or VRF segmentation within the topology. So visually, we're able to set up all of these various sites, uh, data center number one in San Jose, our secondary data center in RTP, along with our two branches, one in Chicago and the other in Miami. And likewise, just as we saw at our engineering console, we're overlaying application flows over the top. So here you can see all these various applications outlined by this legend in the lower left-hand corner. And by simply clicking on these applications in the legend, it'll display those applications on the geotopology. So here's all your voice over IP traffic. Here's your SAP traffic along with Outlook and YouTube and so forth. Also within LiveNX, we're able to leverage our API connection to vManage to understand the policy. So I clicked on that view policy button and then now we're, we are able to read in that policy from vManage. So notice here to provide a frame of reference for the application aware routing policy, notice that there's multiple SLA classes that are defined. One is web SLA with a latency threshold of 100 milliseconds. And then also the voice and video SLA class with a latency threshold of 50 milliseconds. Now notice for the voice and video SLA class that according to policy, it'll prefer the MPLS service provider and the backup service provider is Business Internet. So with this in mind, we can then understand and troubleshoot along with verify the policy that's outlined for vManage. Now let's look specifically at a critical application within the environment, and that's voice over IP. And then likewise, let's take a look at our per segment topology, so on a per VPN or VRF perspective. So first off, I'm going to just enter into this filter, VRF, and I'm going to look specifically at VRF 10. And we saw that earlier in the real-time view on our engineering console. VRF 10 was automatically um, brought up, and I'm just going to go ahead and apply the filter. So now we're going to overlay all of the flows for VRF 10. It looks very similar because this is the critical VRF within the environment or service VPN. Now, likewise, I may want to focus attention on a application of interest. 
So likewise, we can add to this filter. I'm going to look for application and type in VOIP and LiveNX will autocomplete that application and I'll apply the filter as well. So now we're focusing our attention on VRF10 and our critical application voice over IP. And from a LiveNX geotopology view, we can get a better understanding of the topology that our voice traffic is taking. It looks to be fairly full mesh between our three sites, San Jose, Chicago, and Miami. But now when you think about these critical applications like voice over IP, you likewise also may think about quality of service and ensure that there's consistent markings across the board. So now let's change the display by to DSCP in the legend on the lower left hand corner. Now again, it's the same context. We're looking at VRF 10 for voice over IP application traffic. And now we can see that definitely we're getting consistent markings across the system. Everything is being marked EF for our critical application voice over IP. Now, the other aspect that's really important for these critical applications are the service provider paths that it's taking. Now, recall that the policy identified voice over IP to prefer the MPLS path and the backup is business internet. So let's change the display by to service provider. Now, in this case, again, we're looking at the same context, VRF 10, and the application is voice over IP. And we definitely see that voice is taking the critical path of MPLS. And I just clicked on that MPLS in the legend on the lower left hand corner. And now we're highlighting all of the MPLS traffic for VoIP. But notice that voice is also taking the business internet path as well. So during this time frame, Cisco SD-WAN identified that there is an issue and then rerouted the traffic from MPLS to business internet. In our next scenario, let's troubleshoot why our voice over IP traffic got moved from one service provider, MPLS, to the backup internet service provider. So I'll go ahead and clear the filter and click apply. We'll also set the display by back to applications. Now let's identify how we can troubleshoot this brownout scenario in three button clicks. First off, notice that there's dashed lines across the topology connecting these various sites. So from San Jose to Chicago, we see this dashed red line. That represents aggregate tunnel performance site to site. So I clicked on that dashed line and it brought up the summary. So here we see the tunnel performance from San Jose to Chicago and then vice versa from Chicago back to San Jose on the bottom. Now notice also for the business internet path, everything is green for our SLA classes, voice video and web SLA. But for the MPLS service provider, we're seeing high latency. Latency is showing up as having a peak latency of over 200 milliseconds for our SLA classes. So let's dig in further. Obviously, when we looked at the policy earlier, 200 milliseconds is over the threshold for voice and video. Now, specifically, it was 50 milliseconds in the threshold settings. So this is button click number one to get an overview of what's happening for our tunnel performance across our various service providers. For button click number two in troubleshooting this brownout, let's drill down for more detail. So we'll click on this button here and it'll automatically bring up the site-to-site -site Sankey diagram from San Jose to Chicago and all of the application traffic going from site to site. So on the left-hand side, we see all the applications along with the segmentation VRF, VRF 10 or the service VPN 10 uh, for these applications, along with the QoS markings, the service provider path that the traffic is taking, and then on the far right hand side of the Sankey diagram, we see the tunnel performance per service provider. Now, the network engineer can simply click on this play button and will animate all of this traffic going back and forth over these various service providers between San Jose and Chicago. So I'll go ahead and click play and notice how the traffic is on the business internet path and then it'll take the MPLS path 
MPLS may have some problems and it'll fall back over to business internet. So the Sankey diagram allows the network engineer to identify all that application traffic very quickly and see how the, the traffic is being routed across various service provider paths. Now I'm going to go ahead and reset the Sankey diagram. And likewise, if the network engineer would like to drill in on specific applications, you can do that or specific DSCP values as well, simply by clicking on the column headings itself. Now, this is again button click number two in troubleshooting a brownout. Button click number three is that I need to get the details. What are the applications specifically? When is it on the MPLS path? What conversations are being affected and so forth? We can do that by drilling down into each one of these service providers. So a network engineer can click on the service provider bars for MPLS and business internet, and that will bring up all of the detailed reports. So here again is the context, San Jose to Chicago over the MPLS path. Now here's all the application traffic, the DSCP markings, along with the top conversations. And then as I scroll down, we see tunnel performance for MPLS. Here's jitter, loss, as well as delay. Now notice for delay, that's where we're seeing a critical issue because the delay is over 200 milliseconds of latency. Now this is based off of the policy that we notice. So we're lining up the policy with the performance data that we're getting via the API. Now for a period of time, there's high latency at about 200 milliseconds. It drops down to basically zero and then up again to 200 milliseconds. But notice that when there's no latency or very negligible latency on the network, as I scroll to the top, that's when we see traffic on the MPLS path right here. Now, where did all that traffic go? Well, we can simply look over at the business internet uh, view of the detailed reports, and we can see that it's the exact mirror image between the business internet path and the MPLS path. So from the discussion and demo today, we see how LiveNX can be used in a day one scenario to get a good understanding of the network and verify application flows per segment topologies and troubleshooting a brownout. Now in our next webinar in this series, we'll continue with the SD-WAN theme and see how network engineers can utilize LiveNX for day two operations and management of the network. Thanks, David. Um, with that, why don't we pause and go ahead and open it up for questions. So I see a couple of questions here. Um, the first one, how does LiveNX scale in large enterprise networks? Yeah, so LiveNX scales horizontally by leveraging a hierarchical architecture. Uh, LiveNX, uh, the server could be deployed, for example, on premises in your data center or even in your public cloud instance. Uh, then you can deploy LiveNX node collectors in various regions around the globe that will monitor the devices via SNMP as well as a flow. And flow could be a, a very large portion of the monitoring aspect. Uh, some devices can uh, send off thousands of flows per second. We even clocked one router sending off 100,000 flows per second, which is, which is massive. So being able to have this uh, hierarchical um, nature of deploying LiveNX to horizontally scale is really important. So some of our customers may deploy LiveNX in their data center in New York, for example, and then nodes in Europe, Asia, Australia, to be able to scale to very large numbers. So some of our enterprise customers have well over a thousand devices being managed by LiveNX today. That's great. It sounds like um, massive scaling capabilities there. Thanks for that explanation, David. Um, the next question that's come through is, does LiveNX support network devices other than Cisco? Yes, well, we did do a deep dive into Cisco SD-WAN, uh, specifically the, the former VIP Tele product. Uh, LiveNX is, is, uh, has a lot of support for many other vendors, so we're multi-vendor in nature. Many of our customers have hybrid networks, so they might have Cisco or Juniper routers, as an example, Palo Alto or Checkpoint firewalls, 
or maybe even Gigamon packet brokers in their data center. All of those devices are supported within LiveNX along with many, many other vendors as well for your day two operations and monitoring of the network. That's great. So it's truly a, a multi-vendor solution. That's that's awesome. Um, so the, the last question I see here um, is, does LiveNX monitor both vEdge and C-Edge Cisco SD-WAN devices? Yes, that's a good question. So we've been working with Viptela pri even prior to the acquisition by Cisco. So we definitely support all the capabilities of monitoring vEdge uh, for many years. And then we've also collaborated with Cisco for many years, actually, uh, both on the product and the engineering side uh, for things like QoS, uh, previously IWAN, application visibility, and so forth. Um, so we, post-acquisition, we've continued to add capabilities uh, surrounding their C-Edge SD-WAN XE uh, devices. So within LiveNX, there's full parity and support for Cisco SD-WAN monitoring of both V-Edge and C-Edge devices. Thank you. Um, here is another question around Live SP. What are the key differences between LiveNX and Live SP, and will there be any presentations for Live SP? That's an excellent, excellent question. Thank you for that feedback. We'll have to work with our Live SP team to get some presentations done there too. So LiveNX is very much geared toward enterprise customers. Um, it's uh, a deep dive capability into uh, real-time or near real-time flow data, uh, also being able to have rich visualization for things like geotopologies, logical topologies, and so forth. Uh, so very much geared toward large enterprise and large enterprise scale. Live SP is geared for the service provider and the managed service provider uh, networks. So it's multi-tenant in nature. It doesn't have quite the same deep dive capability. So a lot of our customers may they may have um, work with service providers, for example, and for that high level visibility, uh, which is really good visibility for things like Cisco SD-WAN and, and various other types of technologies. You can get that good overview uh, visibility reporting dashboards in a multi-tenant environment for those service providers. And then sometimes those service providers will also sell LiveNX for that deep dive enterprise visibility to those same customers. So basically LiveNX, geared toward the enterprise, Live SP, geared toward service provider and managed service providers. Thank you. Um, so the last question is around whether there is a link for the prior recording. And by that, I believe that you mean the session, the first session in the hackathon series, which was last October and yet uh, this past October, excuse me. Um, and that is actually available on Bright Talk on the live action channel. You can you can find it there. It is um, also focused on SD-WAN. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining today. And how we can help you as next steps are um, you can certainly go back and review this session. As I mentioned at the beginning, you will be sent a link so you can share it with your colleagues and so forth. You can also look back on the Bright Talk channel and view any of our past webinars there as well. You could also schedule a one-on-one -on -one Live and X demo session with one of our subject matter experts. And you can also check out the additional resources in the Bright Talk channel. Thanks again for joining today. Bye-bye.